<laughs> Not just the Mercy Watchers, but everybody. You know, the, the truth of the Eucharist is both simple and profound, and it's, it's simply expressed in John chapter 6, right? Mm -hmm. What we call the bread of life discourse, Absolutely. where Jesus, using the image of the manna from the Old Testament, mm -hmm. which of course, even in biblical times, there was, a, there was a teaching that when the Messiah came, the manna would come back. Uh -huh. And so Jesus, having fed the 5,000, they are wondering, is he, is he the Messiah? And they ask him, you know, our ancestors gave us manna from heaven. What can you give us? And then he says, I will give you manna from heaven, but not the true, not the manna that your fathers ate and died, but the bread of life, which leads to eternal life. Eternal life, yes. And then he goes into this whole explanation of what it means to eat his flesh and drink his blood. And in fact, he describes it in such realistic terms that some of his disciples refuse to follow him anymore. Yeah, they walk away. They're it's like, not in for this. Yeah because they don't understand exactly what he's trying to, to, to teach them. But this is the kernel of Eucharistic faith that then of course is explained more in the Last Supper and then in the teachings of St. Paul and then in the Fathers of the Church. But the kernel is this truth that we believe that the bread and wine actually change through the words of Jesus at the Mass and they change in their essence. So there's no more bread and wine there What's there is Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. St. Thomas has the beautiful line. He says, all our other senses are in this deceived. We can't oh. see Jesus. We can't sense him with our, with our taste or touch. Right. He says, what says trusty hearing? It shall be believed. This is my body. And when Jesus says that, in fact, we believe that's exactly what happens. Wow. And I could give you quotations from every century of the church, from the from the the fathers of the church, bishops, the, the leaders of the church from every century showing that they believed in this change that happens in the bread and wine so that it actually becomes the body and blood of Jesus. We say body, blood, soul, and divinity because wherever Jesus' body is, his blood is there, right. and also his human soul and his divine nature because he's one person. And so at the Eucharist, we have this unique opportunity to encounter the divine person of Jesus. Wow. That's the reality of the Eucharist. Of course, the reality of the Mass also brings us even deeper because the Mass itself invites us to partake in Christ's own gift of self that happened at Calvary. His gift of his life, which is so intimately connected with the Eucharist because of course, it's the Jesus' gift on the cross that makes those words of the Eucharist real. This is my body given for you. This is my blood poured out for you. Well, that's the cross. And that cross becomes present at every mass so that we can live from it. We can eat and drink the fruit of the cross, the blood and water which flowed from his side as he hung upon the cross, which flows to us in the Eucharist so that I can live forever. But if I don't understand that, right. or I believe it's only a symbol, I'll never come to understand the true power of what it means to actually share in Jesus's eternal life and encounter him as a person. I often say, by the way, especially for young people, the moment when they encounter the real person of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament mm -hmm. is the moment they begin being disciples. Because they all of a sudden realize, this is God and he's before me. And therefore, I, I, I have to submit myself to him. The early church always described with that phrase, Jesus is Lord. Huh? He's the Lord. Right. That was the favorite word, way to describe Jesus in the Bible. Mm -hmm. And it's, that's what a disciple says. You're the Lord and I submit my life to you, and I recognize my need for you, which everything about our faith flows from that moment of the encounter, and which, at least when I meet young people and I ask them, and when did you, when did you come to discover right. that your faith meant to you? I'd say 90% of them say it was some kind of moment in adoration, adoration right. where I encountered that Jesus was real, and that he was really here, and that therefore I could have a relationship with him, and I had to submit my life to him. So those, those words of, uh, of of Thomas the Apostle, my Lord and my God, exactly. right? It's, right. It, we, we have that, maybe not spoken in the tradition of the celebration right now, but that is one of those things that yeah. has endured. Yeah, anyone who works with Latino Catholics yes. knows that actually at the moment of the consecration, when you, when you hold up the host, they'll mm -hmm. often say, even out loud, right. mi Señor, mi Dios, yep, right, my right. Lord and my God. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, that's something that I, I'm glad you mentioned that because our church, as it continues to reflect the great um, diversity of our, of our human family, mm -hmm. right, it is becoming much more open to, to a Hispanic culture. Absolutely. And at the University of St. Thomas, you know, the majority of our students come from backgrounds like that. And, yeah. and it's, it's so important for us to understand the riches of that culture. But the wonderful thing about our universal church, the Catholic church, yeah. is that it is God's family. So, so at, the, at the altar, that is the, the supper table, you will, yeah. of humanity. And, and we are all one, regardless of our background in that. So it's yeah. so beautiful. Every nation and tribe, every tongue and language, <laughs> it as is. it says in the book of Revelations. Right. And that's actually prefigured in the Mass today. Like today, the Mass was celebrated in uh -huh. Korean and in Vietnamese and in Chinese and in Tagalog and in all the languages of India and Africa and, and South America. Today, the very same one Eucharist is celebrated there. And so all the nations of the world are in fact one through the mass. Absolutely. Yeah.